Hi everyone, this is Patricia Lemoine. I'm co-author of the Surviving ED blog on thehealthyplace.com. So today I want to talk to you about something that's been on my mind for the last um, last little last little while, few little amount of weeks by now. Um, as you know, I've been in recovery for the last five years. I, I consider myself successfully recovered. And if you've read my past uh, posts of the of you know this last season of spring and summer. You'll realize that I went through a particularly um, tough time in the spring. I lost someone in my family that was very, um, very close to me, and it was actually really hard. And um, it triggered some stuff in me, and I had to. Um, it was a good opportunity to uh, to to explore certain uh, things that I thought were resolved, and then they weren't completely fully because um, certain events just triggered how um, uh, how I was dealing with the fact that I'm an eating disorder survivor. And so in, in that experience, I'll, I'll use that to share with you the fact that, you know, I'm not perfect, and I'm certainly not someone who doesn't have the struggles of my own at times. And so this exercise that I had done a few years ago that had, done, that had you know, given great results is something that was also great, you know, recently and, and helped so much. Um, you know, and I did that with my therapist and also on my own quite a bit, quite often I, I used it. So it's an exercise of forgiving um, yourself. Oftentimes we think of the feeling of, um, the, the, not the feeling, but the, con the, the concept of forgiveness. We, we think about it in terms of how it relates to others and we have to forgive this person, that person. But very often, you know, in, in the case of an eating disorder, in, in my case at least, I realized that I had to forgive myself for um, the fact that I had this condition to begin with a few years ago, that de well, many years ago by now, that developed, um, and it's no one's fault, and it certainly wasn't mine or my parents, it just happened. It's, it's a mental illness, and it happened, and I had to deal with it, and so did everyone around me, because it's not something you go through alone. And so in my case, what I can tell you is that uh, when I started to explore the need to forgive myself because, you know, I couldn't get past the point of, of, of just acceptance without, without being able to forgive, um, I started to feel a lot better once I, I was able to do that exercise and, and just really fully commit to it. So the first step is really to just witness your feelings, uh, witness how you feel and not just give a, um, a very general label like I feel tired, I feel fat, I feel depressed, I feel upset. What's behind it? You know, I feel upset because someone called me um, shallow because I think about my looks. Or I feel upset because, um, you know, I overate or I, I didn't overexercise the way that I usually do. Or I feel, um, I feel stupid. Or I feel, um, you know, like I don't measure up, like I was going to look a certain way and I didn't and I feel like a failure. So really go with the whole scenario and why do you feel like this? What's behind it? And sometimes you'll even realize that even a song, you know, comes to mind when you feel a certain feeling that you've labeled yourself with or a name that you've labeled yourself with. So that's number one, witness the whole, the whole picture. And then an amazing thing will happen when you witness that and you do that exercise. And if you do it in writing, it'll be very clear on paper, you know, once you've journaled, that... Uh, that that you'll start to have compassion for yourself because you'll start to realize, well, this is my story. I've been telling myself this story, and it's really awful. It's an awful feeling that it brings about, and I want to get out of it. So the great thing about that first step is that you'll want to get better. Um, and, and, and if you're not completely 100% committed to getting better, well, you'll at least have opened that door that you're allowing yourself and giving yourself permission to feel better and to break away from that um, from that feeling. The second step is to really just learn how to let the feelings go. That was very hard for me. That was, you know, it's, it's, I was, yeah, I was, I, I never thought that I was going to be able to actually commit and understand and get to that point. Letting go of a feeling. And the image of letting go of a feeling, for me, I really work with a visual image of just holding something very tight and letting it go, you know, like a feather, a piece of paper, a pebble, just and, and just throwing it away. And it doesn't mean that the feeling doesn't exist anymore. 
what it means is that it no longer has you know a hold on me and that's the important uh, that's the important thing that you should focus on that you'll never fully be able to completely uh, you know not feel a certain way but but it shouldn't it shouldn't ruin the rest of your life and the exercise in letting it go and kind of watching that feeling leave your body and leave that piece of paper now that you've written it down that's what it will help you with it will help you with you know allowing someone else the universe whatever you want it to be to 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 have that feeling but not you and it doesn't mean it'll resolve everything it doesn't mean that you'll feel better instantly but your heart will have opened up the possibility that maybe you felt upset and it was because of XYZ and you don't have to feel it you know for X amount of days or X period of time you could just allow yourself to fully feel it and then just release it you know and and and, and let it go in the sense that it no longer has a hold on you so that's what I kind of encourage you to do I hope that it's uh, it was inspiring maybe for you to try. You can come up with ideas and images of your own. And I certainly welcome you to uh, to write comments and leave me, you know, um, little notes. I always appreciate and I make a big effort to respond as quickly as I can. And so I hope that it's helpful to you. And don't uh, hesitate in sharing your stories with me because I always appreciate it. Thank you for listening.